The enigmatic figure of Albert Einstein is universally recognized for his groundbreaking theories that change the way we think about time, space, and reality. For example, in 1905, Einstein proposed the special theory of relativity, which introduced the revolutionary concept that the laws of physics are the same for all observers without acceleration. It also assumed that the speed of light in a vacuum is constant, regardless of the speed of the observer. This idea was in stark contrast to Newtonian mechanics and was considered unusual because it led to strange conclusions such as time dilation and length contraction. Today, however, these phenomena are scientifically proven facts. Developing his special theory, Einstein presented the general theory of relativity in 1915. It argued that gravity was not a force acting between masses, as Newton had hypothesized, but rather a curvature of space-time caused by mass and energy. The idea that massive objects could warp the very fabric of reality was beyond surreal, but it was confirmed by observations most famously during a solar eclipse in 1919 that showed starlight bending around the sun. Likewise, in the field of quantum mechanics, Einstein's mental experiments led to the concept of spooky action at a distance known as quantum entanglement. Along with colleagues Podolsky and Rosen, he developed a paradox called EPR, which challenged the completeness of quantum mechanics. The idea that two particles could affect each other's states instantaneously over vast distances seemed absurd at the time. However, numerous experiments since then have confirmed this startling phenomenon. In general, Einstein theoretical physicist, who received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921, as well as wrote more than 300 scientific papers on physics, and almost 200 books on historical and philosophical topics. This is how Einstein is remembered, but not many people know that as a person he was very unorthodox. Sometimes he behaved contradictory, rude and even insane in the eyes of some educated gentleman. What exactly was the cause of discontent and indignation? Well, let's find out. Once Albert Einstein was a baby, he was born in 1879 in the German city of Ulm in a family of Jews with average income. In 1880, the Einsteins moved to Munich. He received his primary education in the local Catholic school. Albert himself considered himself very religious. The boy firmly believed that the knowledge of the universe is inextricably linked to the name of God. He loved to be in church, watched all the actions of priests, and only one thing was incomprehensible to him why the all-powerful God allows wars. But at the age of 12, under the influence of scientific works of such great geniuses as Kant and Euclid, his views changed dramatically. He became skeptical of religion, thinking it was a weapon in the hands of manipulators, which he saw as the church and clergy. Later, when asked about God, he said the following words, I believe in Spinoza's God, who manifests himself in all things, subject to the laws of harmony, but not in a God who is preoccupied with the fate and affairs of mankind. Not surprisingly, such words were considered offensive by many, but nothing stopped him. Einstein went on to study at the Munich Gymnasium. He expressed his thoughts in a non-standard language, used terminology not quite clear to others, and at the same time had a speech impediment. Therefore, some educators continued to see him as a mentally retarded teenager. At the same time, Albert paid close attention only to his favorite exact sciences, but literature, history, and German language went to the background. Especially difficult he gave him the language, the teacher even warned Einstein that he would not be able to finish school. The young man hated school, he considered teachers upstarts, who do not know much, but feel their permissiveness. Not infrequently Einstein not only crossed sullen looks with teachers, but also could afford something demonstratively mumbled to himself under his nose in their presence, he earned himself a reputation as the worst of all students. Later, having never received a document of graduation from grammar school, Einstein and his parents went to Italy. When he turned 16, he decided to continue his education at the Federal Higher Technical School in Zurich. He had no money for the road, so he traveled from Italy to Switzerland. On foot, Albert passed his exams in the exact sciences brilliantly, while the humanities were hopelessly failed. The rector liked this young man, but since he could not accept him into his institution, he recommended that he go to school in northern Switzerland and then come back to the university. Albert followed the advice and in 1896 was already studying at the Polytechnic of Zurich. Studying at the institute was not easy again. Young Albert constantly argued with the professors, especially with the physics teacher. But in 1901, he still successfully completes his studies. Moreover, he receives a teaching diploma. He became one of the most famous pacifist advocates in the world. Einstein's anti-war tendencies began in childhood. 
He avoided compulsory military service in Germany by renouncing his German citizenship and evaded the Swiss Army by presenting certificates that he was unfit for service. Whether this was actually the case is not known. A staunch opponent of the very concept of conscription which he called legalized slavery, Einstein, to say the least, was not very upset that his health had failed him so badly. Despite this, Einstein continued to use all his authority to call for a speedy end to the war and the federalization of Europe. In November 1915, he wrote an essay, What I Think of This War, in which he blamed the biological nature of masculinity for the aggression leading to wars. At the same time, he began to actively develop the idea of creating an international organization that would control the governments of different countries. And despite the fact that many people were irritated by his ideas in the 1920s, against the background of emerging Nazism in Germany, his pacifist position was strengthened and he began to play an active role in several peacekeeping campaigns. At the time, this seemed to him one of the few effective ways to speak out against the blindness of the world. In 1922, he joined the League of Nations Committee on Intellectual Cooperation, a body dedicated to cultural and mental exchange between nations in the interest of world peace. By 1931, he called himself a militant pacifist because he was convinced that the only way to stop war was for people to universally refuse to fight. But Hitler's transformation from sarcastic extremist to Chancellor of Germany of Germany in 1933 changed the world and forced Einstein to reconsider. When Hitler launched his state fear machine, which was particularly ferocious in its targeting of Jews, Einstein realized that pacifism was not a panacea in certain circumstances. He realized the potential need for armed resistance to oppressive regimes and abandoned his earlier pacifist stance because of the difficult political climate. In 1954, he explained to writer Herbert Fox exactly how he adjusted his worldview, quote, I have always been a pacifist, that is, I have refused to recognize military force as a means of resolving international conflicts. However, er, I believe that it would be unwise to cling to this principle unconditionally. An exception should be made when hostile force threatens a nation with total annihilation. In 1933, he renounced his German citizenship for the second time, and 11 years later he commented on the tragedy of the Warsaw Ghetto and the deaths of more than 300,000 people with the following words. The German people are responsible for these massacres and must be punished as a nation. Not surprisingly, these words infuriated many people in Germany. A year later, his stance was far from softened in a conversation with his German friend James Frank. He observed that Germany had committed the murder of millions of civilians according to a carefully prepared plan. Give them the will they would do it again. There is no guilt or remorse in them, after the Nazis sentenced his writings to be burned. Einstein exacted his small revenge immediately after the war by banning the publication of his books in Germany. During this time, Einstein's view of humanity's prospects became extremely pessimistic. There will always be war as long as man lives, he declared. Now, more than ever, he was convinced that the system of state control needed a major overhaul, otherwise there was no hope. He pushed harder and harder the idea of a supranational parliament, an intergovernmental organization that would have enough legislative and executive power to keep the peace it should act as an international police force, serving as an international tribunal if necessary. In other words, it should act as a universal force to which each individual country would obey unconditionally, without shirking responsibility for its actions. Albert Einstein's journey from patent clerk to Nobel laureate and scientific luminary is extraordinary and highly inspiring. His life and views offer profound insights into how bold intellectual endeavors can redefine our understanding of the universe. Einstein's legacy goes beyond the equations, theories, and scientific revolutions he sparked. It encompasses his philosophy of life, his humanitarian work, and his outspoken statements about society and politics. He was a staunch defender of civil rights, a staunch opponent of nationalism and militarism, and an advocate of supranational organization. His worldview was based on an unwavering belief in individual freedom, the pursuit of truth, and the importance of intellectual humility. The scientist retained a lifelong sense of wonder and mystical admiration for nature, symbolized by his famous quote, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the sense of mystery. It is the source of all true arts and sciences. He spent his life encouraging critical thinking, questioning authority, and not losing his sense of curiosity despite the rigid structures of education and society. Einstein's frank thoughts on the responsibilities of scientists and intellectuals demonstrate his deep understanding of the impact and consequences of his work. The essence of his spirit, his defiance of convention, his tireless curiosity and compassion for humanity continues to resound through the ages, 
His life is a testament to the incredible feats humanity can achieve when intelligence is combined with conscience.